Hello everybody, this is Kevis Games, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to assess shells and um, what to take into account when using different kinds of shells in the game. And with shells, I of course mean ammunition. So, um, there are a lot of shell types in the game, and we're going to uh, split them up in three types of shell, like variants. The first one is going to be the AP shot, uh, so the solid shot weapon. So I'm just going to take one of these tanks here. This here is a solid shot. This one is a type AP, so armor piercing. This one has no additives. It's a fully, fully simple armor piercing solid shot. There's nothing else added to it. It penetrates and then you have a giant metal ball that shrapnels off and it functions kind of like a shotgun once you are inside of the tank. There are all kinds of variants to this, such as the APCR, APC, APBC, and APCBC, and I'll, I'll go in out what those are, like, all mean, and what they do in a moment. Next up is APHE. The difference here, you can see here, the this shot, when you see the damaging effect here, you can see kind of shrapnel, here you can see an explosion. That's because these are filled with a explosive, in this case, it's a EXPD, and uh, they all have a TNT equivalent in the stat card, and that's basically how big of a bang you're gonna get once they penetrate. These are quite a bit better than solid shots in general, even though solid shots have been buffed recently to have more shrapnel, so they do do quite a lot of damage. The APHE is still gonna be better at the price of weight, which in return is gonna have a lower penetration. Here you guys can see, um, this shell have a maximum penetration value of 204 millimeters compared to the 217 on the a uh, solid AP shot. The next type of uh, ammunition is going to be chemical. So I'm just gonna take one of these uh, very high tier tanks and here it is, heat and hash. Those are two types of chemical rounds. Chemical rounds have a unique damage effect, and I'll be going into those in detail later on. But first, let's go into the types of solid AP shells. So I'm gonna go and uh, see if I can find some good H uh, solid uh, shots. Uh, okay, here we got a solid AP, so we're already going into that, and this is an armor piercing capped ballistic cap. This one has both the APC and APBC modifications, making it the APCBC. So uh, the APCBC, here you guys can see, this one is streamlined and has two yellow lines on them. This is how you can indicate them. And it has both the capped bonus and the ballistic cap bonus. Compare that to, for example, the um, T30, this thing has a armor piercing ballistic cap shot. You can see how it has an orange line and then a red line. Even though this one is a HE variant, the uh, different lines, th those basically mean it's a ballistic cap, but not a capped ballistic cap. As you can see here, capped ballistic cap, this one has the two orangish lines. And then I'm gonna check whether I can fight myself uh, an only capped round. That's gonna be a bit of a search. You guys can see it's APHE. APHE ballistic cap. Those are uh, all. Uh, you you really have to read what kind of type they are. You can see that right under the name of the shell. But uh, oh, actually, I know a tank that has a ballistic cap. Here we go. You can see the really flat front, the cap. Those are all of the different. Uh, those are the are the base different type. Then also you have APCR. But first we're going to go into, and ABFS, uh, but we're first going to go into what are the Captain Ballistic Caps. So Ballistic Cap, it kind of says it, uh, it is a cap in front of the shell that is going to improve aerodynamics of it. So it has a better flight pattern and, and it thus retains more speed at a longer distance and thus retains a more penetration at a longer distance. And... Um, the compared to the cap, the cap is a sort of uh, V-shaped front. So um, uh, let's say I have gonna have to grab another tank again. 
uh, with the V-shaped front, if you hit the front of this tank, and you have basically have a V-shape, so uh, uh, yeah, the shelf, the, sh the uh, shell shape is going to be up and then away. And since the diagonal part right here is going to be straight in touch with the diagonal plate right here, the round will, instead of moving forward, it will move downwards. So it will have an improved penetration value against angled armor. But uh, the cap um, makes it and that it has a uh, lesser ballistics. For that, I can show you guys in the test drive here. But what uh, what they basically did to counter that is do cap and then a ballistic cap. So we have the advantage of both. So uh, here you guys can see at the first 400 to 1200 meters, the, the distance between each line is rather small. But once you are hitting above 2000 meters, the lines are actually going to be quite big because the shell slows it down because it doesn't have any ballistic cap to it. And this APCR, these different APCR shells here have this exact same issue. And uh, comp uh, comparison to that, the APBC uh, kind of shells will not have that issue. So I'm going to take this into the chest drive. Basically what it means, if you have a ballistic cap, you're going to have an easier time aiming at distance. And if you have a cap, then you're going to have an easier time against angled armor. And I fired my shot there. Uh, you guys can see here the philo uh, various velocities. These won't have the exact same uh, thing going on, but you can see the distance difference between like 2000 meters to 2400 meters and uh, zero to 400 meters. Like the distance between there is less because the shell slows down less. Now those are the two difference between those two units. Um, cap and ballistic cap can both appear on a HG type weapon uh, as shown in this one. Uh, this one here is an APCBC, so capped ballistic cap with an explosive uh, mat, uh, fitter. So whether you have a solid shot with these modifications or a um, uh, AP HG uh, shot that has this one. Here you guys can see the various difference here is the AP, APC, APC, BC. You guys can see here the clear differences on the solid shots variants here. And those are just the variants, various types that there are. There are also uh, so, uh, full HG shells. So these are not AP HG, but HG. These will explode on contact and have a very low penetration value. The only uh, tanks that can really make use of uh, these kind of uh, shells are very big derp tanks, such as the KV-2 with its 152 millimeter gun. Because the very big sh uh, shell size, uh, they can pack a lot of explosives in there. And these shells are um, fully independent of velocity and uh, distance. The only thing they really care about is how big is the shell and how much explosive is in there. And that's all the, that matters uh, to these kind of shells. And uh, similar to that, we have the camel core rounds, uh, which are at the top tier. Again, I'm just going to go back to the uh, uh, M1 Abrams because he has the uh, hash shell and he the fast shells. These uh, act similar to the HG, as in they will explode on touching anything. So that means that if you hit a bush or a fence or anything, the shell will explode. Normal rounds will generally shoot through the fence and then hit the tank behind the fence. But if you attempt to shoot an HG shell, has shell, or a heat of shell through a fence, you are not able to. So those are, those are the small drawbacks. That said, heat of S is similar to an AP shell in that it has a small cone of damage but a very high penetration value. Hash shells have a much, they have in comparison less penetration than the heat but a very big angle of attack uh, that uh, gives it a lot of like a very big cone. They can be, uh, sometimes even have a 160 to 180 cone of damage. So if you penetrate right here, the damage cone would be from, it would go up, it would go 
into the further into the turret. It will go down into where the ammunition is going to be stored. And it is pretty much, it's going to be annihilating everything. Well, but with heat, you would generally, if you shoot here, you're going to get the gunner. You're probably going to get the breach, and you might get the loader behind it, but I doubt it. Because actually, no, it will not get it, because the path of shot is going to be hitting the ammo here instead, if it goes through. That said, uh, especially Hash and HE are going to have problems with tanks that have add-on armor plates and I don't really know any tanks that I can show you guys that have that upgrade. Uh, no I don't really have any of them but uh, I can actually show you here on the picture here uh, the IS-2 here it has a wire fence uh, modifications I, I, for, I do not have the add-on armor however so I cannot actually show it on the tank itself but the tank uh, will have like a wire fence all around it and hash and HG will detonate on that. So that's something you have to take into consideration when looking at your shells. The last shell types are the uh, hardened core AP rounds. So going back to USA because those have the best examples. I'm going to grab my T29 and go back to modifications. And here's a APCR shot. They have a much higher velocity than a normal shot uh, because it's a very soft shell with a very small but dense core inside of it. Long story short, these things have better penetration than normal solid shots or APHC, but are kind of functioning like a laser once inside of a tank. You really have to point at whatever you want to damage exactly before you shoot. And um, that's where all they will do damage to. After that, uh, you're going to get uh, APCR. Uh, sorry, that's APCR, APDS. And APDS stands for Armor Piercing Discarding Sabo. So basically what it is, the soft shell of the APCR is replaced with a different kind of shell that literally falls apart shortly after the sh uh, shot leaves the barrel. So what it means is only the soft core will stay like on flight. Which means that the shell is way lighter and thus can be pro uh, pro uh, propelled at a way higher velocity. This gives even more penetration. This is going to be this is a way smaller gun, so that's why it actually has less than the APCR on the other gun. But they have way higher penetration than, let's say, this here. 160 to 228. It's 170. Here, 228 again. 65, 228. They're all way worse than the APDS. However, APDS is not very accurate. Though, in the game here, they are decently accurate, but in real life, they were less accurate than uh, shown in this game. So they end up giving a different kind of AP shell, which is the APFSDS. This is a fin stabilized discarding sabo. These are the same way as the discarding sabo, but they have a fin stabilized in the back. And heat also has that. So I showed you the heat from before, but if you go, for example, here to uh, Pens 4F1, custom, uh, not customization, modification, this is a heat shell as well. See the arrow pointer? That's the heat shell. But it doesn't have the fin stabilizer. And taking all that into consideration, there are um, a few different things that you really have to take into consideration when choosing your shells for your tank. First, at what BR am I at? Are there any heavy tanks at that BR that I have to uh, face? So, for example, examples of heavy tanks will be the uh, T95 Doom Turtle, which has a 305mm frontal plate. And from the side, you're looking at a 50mm uh, plate and another 100mm. So, you at least want to have to penetrate 150mm um, to actually when you're at this BR. If you're at a lower penetration value, you're not going to have a good time because you're not going to be able to penetrate this thing even from the side. And preferably, if possible, you want to be able to hit 305 millimeters. 
and um, otherwise, actually another good example would be the T29, T30, and T34 that have this uh, 203 millimeter frontal uh, mantlet and a uh, about 170 to, uh, to 220 to uh, if you add, uh, have the tracks here frontal plate that you're gonna have to penetrate if you want to deal with it. Otherwise, uh, Germany has the Tiger twos, of course. Uh, if you're gonna face Germany, you're gonna have to take into consideration. Okay, I'm at this tank. I need to penetrate at least 185 millimeters in order to deal with the frontal turret of a Tiger two. Otherwise, you're gonna have to only gonna be able to hit the gun, uh, gun, go circle around. Another tank would be the uh, take consideration would be the co uh, the jumbos. 4.7 BR. If you're gonna be, they're gonna you're gonna be facing jumbos. Uh, at 3.7, you're gonna be facing KV ones. Uh, Britain also has Churchills at 4.7, and uh, Tartus 6.7. France also got this got their own jumbo. So all things you have to take into consideration. So now I'm gonna take some example for some tanks that I would I'm gonna assess shelves for. So Panzer 4 F1 2.3. So we're gonna go to modifications and we have five shell types. We have an AP uh, HE round of 10 millimeters, which I'm gonna discard immediately. I'm not gonna use it. A smoke shell, which is actually another type of shell. These are uh, you can use it to provide yourself cover. I would only use these on tanks that have a reload time of less than seven and a half seconds because otherwise you you're firing and then you have to wait a very long time before you can actually shoot again and it also takes time to switch between shells so um you if you want to leave smoke you have to fire your your normal shot then switch to the smoke and then fire it and then switch back again before you can shoot so i would only use them if you have a quick reload now we're going to go to go to take a look at these three shells. This is in low velocity, 4 and 11 meters per second, which you can see in the muscle velocity there. Uh, shell, APCBC with 56 millimeters penetration, but I'm going to assess it at 500 meters. So 50 millimeters on flat armor and 39 on 30 degrees. I'm not really fond of that at 2.3. So we're going to look at our other, other options. Here we got an 80 millimeter to 69 millimeter HE shell for 50 meters per second. So it's already getting better. And TNT equivalent of 812.1 grams is pretty good for a heat shell. Then we got the second heat here, 875.5. Uh, got another 20 millimeters penetration of the flat armor. This is just the best shell here we got here. And we're gonna be using that thing for the majority of the time. That said, um, do take a note that it costs 20 silver lions to fire each shell. And now it is fine there, but if you go at the leopards. Uh, okay, this one uh, is wrong uh, example here. Uh, what about it? Can I use as a good example? Uh, here, heat shell, 440 silver lions to fire that heat shell. Uh, did it lower the cost there a little bit? Maybe. Here, if you can fire this heat for 650, but uh, at 9.7, you're going to prefer the heat at the, uh, the APFSDS. But it will cost 900 silver lions to fire each shot. And then you must hope that you have a positive gain in terms of... Uh, how much silver lion you earn per shot. If you're missing a lot of shots, you might want to use the cheaper ammunition. Okay, we're going to take another random tank and give an example assessment. This one is going to be really interesting. We have six options of shells. Some of them actually have to be unlocked, so you don't have all of them at right off the bat. So we've got a 125mm uh, penetration shell here. I'm not really too happy with it because we, I cannot frontally penetrate a Tiger II. And at 6.3, we're pretty likely to get to 6.7. So I kind of want to see something stronger. So we're first going to check out 159 maximum penetration. 
142. It looks like we will have to take a, a P, uh, PCR shot to deal with Tiger 2s. So, okay, I'm gonna take, uh, compare these two. 1020, 1030. So, okay, this one is a little bit slower, but. Uh, uh, this one has way better penetration, though. So, I don't know why this one would be better than that one. So, I guess I'll be taking out the BR6. 367p for my anti-heavy duty i'm probably gonna take around five shells but i do want i don't really want a main apcr so then we're gonna take these compressors in this apcbc apheche apheche bc so this one only has a ballistic cap this one has cap ballistic cap and this one is only so, a solid shot so one four two one fifty nine 142. It does seem that this one is going to be the best shot. 110 on maximum. 81, 78. Yeah. 73, 86, 59. Okay. Yeah. This one is going to be the best shot um, in terms of penetration. But if you look at this, actually, we do have a bit of a choice here. TNT equivalent of the APHC is 81.6 grams. This one only has 74.8 grams, and this shell actually is 164 grams of TNT equivalent. So if we can settle with a little bit less penetration here, with the BR365A, we're gonna have a way stronger shot that can one-shot a lot more targets. If you're gonna be a flanker, so you're going to be shooting from the side a lot. I strongly would suggest to grab the 365. And otherwise I would simply grab the 367. Because the 367, um, the 75 grams of TNT equivalent, might not always one shot. But the penetration is going to be needed if you're going to be frontally engaging people. Well, with the side shots, you're going to be looking at the higher explosive mass. Because the penetration matters less because you're going to be shooting at weak spots anyways. And then you just want to make sure you want to you get the good one shots, so you can get in and out quickly without spending more shots. Might get uh, spotted, etc., etc. You do not want that. And uh, those are really like the main things you want to consider. If some shells, if you have like, uh, I actually used to be a pretty big noob, and then I would have let's say a I think it was like my yeah my M5 Stewart. And uh, I look at these shells. Actually, no, it's not this one. Uh, oh, anyways, it was one of these tanks, but it basically had APCR as an option. And I was like, um, <laughs> okay, the APCR has the highest penetration. It must be the best shell. But APCR really does nothing in terms of damage. And for that, I'm gonna grab the test drive here and uh, not this one, uh, T29 test drive and uh, swap the shell so I preload the APCR. And this is gonna be the same with APFSDS and APDS. And uh, solid shots are gonna be barely any better. Some of the solid shots, if they're heavy enough, you can simply be shooting center of mass and be on your way. But with um, the APCR, etc., you're going to have a hard time. So first up, you're going to look at the velocity here. We're going to put the gun up a little bit in the air so you guys can see it properly. Uh, gun is not stabilized, so it's going to be wobbly a little bit. But you do see a little bit of the speed difference between the 20, 2000 meters and 0 meters distances respectively but we're going to be getting in front of that mouse and say that we actually we're engaging it with our solid shot i'm actually going to first load up the ap um hg shell here to show um what we can do with the shell against the mouse we probably won't be able to even penetrate the front of the turret there. So let's say we see the mouse, and uh, it's probably around 200 meters here now. Really don't do anything. So I'm gonna swap to the solid shot AP. We are most likely going to carry the APHE in this tank. So uh, since I 
don't have enough penetration against that mouse with that shell, if I do not have any other shell, I'm pretty fucked. And even the AP cannot deal with it. So, we're going to go with the solid shot. Try to get a little bit closer and see if we can then penetrate it. Also know that I'm making the armor a little bit more straight. Because AP CR has a really difficult time if it comes to doing any angled armor. And you guys could see there, it is literally a laser pointer. So I'm gonna shoot right next to the turret mantle. Boop. And I got a loader. You can see the ammo right beside it and I did not hit the ammo. Now I'm gonna show you guys a trick what you can do with HG. I'm not sure what our, I can actually do with this tank or whether I have to take out D30 because the T30 has a way stronger HG shell. But it's something called trap shotting. And I'm gonna get really close to actually show it really in detail. But let's say we got the mouse here. You can see the armored turret cheeks. That they are like going downwards into the tank. Like right here. And uh, this one actually is not powerful as I can see. So, but I'm gonna, so I'm gonna grab the uh, T30. Which has a pretty big uh, HG shell. And show you guys what I can do with that HG shell. So this is going to be the derp gun. The glorious, glorious derp gun. Boop. <laughs> oh, I love that thing so much. I actually have trap shot at an IS-6 on video with this thing when I was doing a review on it. And I was like, I'm maybe going to get the gun barrel. Try to get the trap shot. Because otherwise I cannot do shit against it. Because my normal ammunition is nowhere near powerful enough to deal with it. But then it was a one shot. <laughs> At a pretty difficult angle as well. Here you guys can see the insane reload on some of these bigger higher sized guns. Which is also something to take into consideration when you're taking things like solid shot and APCR. If you have a really long reload, they can easily get away if you only if you're firing uh, less one shotty uh rounds so then you might actually want to prefer to get uh like use shells that are uh less penetrative but more damaging and you get to the side of people if needed and i think i'm close enough to actually get a good shot on there boop you guys can see how it exploded downwards there that's how you trap shot with HG. And it's really mainly done with HG. You're not gonna do like too much here otherwise. But those are really the main things you have to consider when using different types of shells. What kind of shell type is it? Are, we, are am I facing any very tough targets? Um, if you're if you're not sure whether you are facing tough targets, you can just play a few matches with the standard round, and the standard round is generally decent, but not great, but like good enough. And if you find anything that you're gonna have a really difficult time dealing with, then you can like look in, into those tanks and what they're they have their protection and compare them to your ammunition type. At low tiers, this might not very be worth it a lot because your research to new vehicles is going to be pretty fast. But at the high tier, it's going to be worth quite a bit because you're going to have to grind quite a bit for every new vehicle. And if you want to get that vehicle, it's going to take a while. It's just going to take a while, and then you might as well improve your loadout and get the best out of your vehicles that you have. That said. I hope you guys all very much enjoyed watching and I will catch you guys all later. See ya.